Hi guys, welcome to today. I'm running solo all the way down to Southampton Docks. Picking up an empty fridge and returning it. So a nice easy run. I've had a look at the old Google app and the M25 is knackered going the way I would usually go. So what I'm going to do very sneaky, because amazingly it's clear going across Dartford Crossing. So I'm going to go that way, make a nice little change. But anyway, all I'm doing is running solo, so it's easy, 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 easy. Um, but anyway, I shall uh, most likely see you when I'm on my break. Go clean the windshield, because it's got loads of bug squash all over it and it's all dried on and horrible. So I'll go clean that. And I'll be on my way, so I shall see you when I'm on my break.
well. I've had to stop on the way there. Bank holiday weekend traffic. People, why do you bother going out? I mean, really, you're just going to sit in traffic. I started at 10.45. All I've got is a solo to Southampton and back again. That's it. It's now 15.30, and I've just made it to this service area. Um, I've forgotten where I am. I've forgotten where I am. How have I forgotten where I am? <laughs> I've actually completely forgotten where the hell I am. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I've completely forgotten. Holy hell. Winchester services. I've just had to look it up. Oh dear. I was just sitting here and I was like, where am I? Oh dear God! But everything was mullered. I mean, if if I'd have tried to go the normal way to the M3, that that was that was just static. That was just done. So obviously, I went Dartford way, as you will have seen. And I'm coming down towards the M3, and there's no matrix signs warning me or anything like that. Um, tailbacks and all that kind of stuff. And there's a queue near side lane and this is three miles away at least maybe more from the M3 and it's all backing up oh god I'm going to be stuck in this for ages and I've noticed that the outside lanes, the M25 lanes are still moving so I've plunked myself in there because there's a sneaky one there is a sneaky one as a lot of you guys will most likely be aware, and for those who aren't, I'm just about to tell you, the M3 has some extensive roadworks going on. And virtually every night, it is... I'm going to close that. Oh dear. It is... There we go, lovely. It is... Closed between 3 and 2. And because of that, there is, a con there is a constant diversion in place for whenever it's closed. And that basically takes you out towards Basingstoke and the A30 and brings you back up Hounslow, I think it is. Uh, junction 13 on the M25. Because the M3 is junction 12, so as you're aware. And I'm seeing all this traffic and it's absolute chaos. I mean, it, it's just dead stopped well I can't go that way I, I just can't so I've been sneaky I've gone all the way to the A30 I've gone round and I've followed the diversion now I have not followed that diversion before I know it's there but usually by the time I'm coming back and the M3 is closed I just bugger off up the A34 to the M4 and across simpler so I've never been down that way and I did, there'll be some footage, I'll edit in some footage here and there and everywhere else. And there was one point, trundling along, as you will have seen, and there's a bus lane down there. I'm driving along quite happily and never been here so I'm trying to look for diversion signs and stuff like that because I don't have a clue. I'm like, I'm sure that just said goods vehicle, bus and goods vehicle. No carried on, bus and goods vehicle. <laughs> so I've buggered off into it and I've been like, yeah, I'll take a bit of that sunshine, lovely jabby. <laughs> and I've carried on down there. But I, I didn't know, I, I just, you know, I'm trying to look for diversion signs, people all over the place style thing. It, it's just one of those, I don't know where I am, so I'm just trying to stay with the traffic, you know? Trying to stay safe with the traffic. And it just, I just noticed, bus and hate goods vehicles. Lovely jubbly, take a bit of that. So I went down that way, but anyway, I used that little cut through, came out onto the M3, and coming down towards Winchester Services, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna to have to stop in a minute here. You know, start at 10.45, you're getting, what, 3.30. You've got time, but 
you're going down to the docks on bank holiday weekend. Hmm. Yes, and I'm going down to... Now, they're not a supplier, so it doesn't really matter. At least I don't think it does. I'll soon find out if it does. Going down to Red Funnel. And lots of people use that for the ferry across. And so it's going to be round. And I'm thinking, I, I've got to go down... I'm going to use the M27 on the 271 and follow it in that way. It's going to be far easier. But even so, I'm going to get stuck in the traffic. And I'm thinking, given that I got an infringement a little while ago when I thought, well, I could make it, and I couldn't, I thought, bank holiday weekend, do I want to risk it? Nah. So I stopped in here. But he's been cocked. Just. And I, 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 I don't get it. It's. For example, let's say there was a boat show on at Southampton, okay, and I wanted to go to it. Now, I don't swim, I have no real interest in boats. <laughs> it's just, that's me, personally. And let's say, for argument's sake, I wanted to have gone to a boat show. Get in my car, from my house, and off I go. I still wouldn't be there now. It's a complete waste of a day. You sit in this traffic and you see people in it and you sit there and you think, okay, it's a bank holiday weekend, so you've got the Monday off, but you're gonna spend all of Saturday, or Friday, commuting to where you're going. You're gonna have, if it's on a Saturday especially, you're gonna have Sunday down there, then you've got to spend all the Monday going back. Why? If it's what you want to do, fine, you go right ahead. You go knock yourself out, but all you're doing is sitting in the traffic. And the thing, the funny thing is, you get so many frustrated people because they obviously want to get there to spend as much time wherever they're going as possible. And they're weaving in and this, weaving out of there, weaving here, weaving in, weaving there. And they do it for miles. And then you go past them. And then they do it again. And then you go past them. And then they do it again. And then you go past them. I, I hate bank holiday weekends. I detest them to an nth degree. And you get so many accidents. Ah, oh, so many people go, oops, up the rear end of the vehicle in front. But anyway, that's, that's what it is, you know, that's what it is. I have a shift tomorrow at 13.30. And considering I started at 10.45 today, even if I run my 15 out, I've got more than enough time in between my shifts. So I don't really care. I love days like this. You've started at early enough so that, whatever your st so that your start time tomorrow means you could do potentially 15 hours and still have enough time. I love it. Because then you're just sitting in your cab thinking, bring it on, come on, bring it on. Because I, I am in no rush. I am in zero rush. I've got nothing planned Monday except the garden. Oh. Yeah, the garden. Oh, God. Oh. I was having a good day till I remembered that. Bert's done the back garden. She's been sending me photos. Um, what? One of our cats, Saxon, the youngest one, when we first moved in, we had a different cat. Unfortunately, he died. Well, we had two, but one of them died. And Bert had this idea of getting a little birdhouse. Because, you know those... I, I don't know what plants are called. I, I, me and plants, I, I, I hate gardening. I, plants and me, I don't know. But you know those plants that tend to attract butterflies with those purple, I want to call them flowers, but they're not, they're like a, a cone style thing, but little flowers, yeah, whatever they are. Well, we had one of those in the garden, and it was quite substantial. And so Bert got one of those little bird uh, house things, not an actual bird house, but a little tiny thing you can hang off of a branch, and little birds can go in there, and hung it up in, in all the foliage. 
And well, Cleo and the late Astin never used to bother with it. They didn't really care. They were more interested in adventure and finding mice. Well, Saxon likes birds. He doesn't mind the odd mouse. He's a bit partial to a mouse now and then. But he prefers birds. And he discovered the little hanging basket that little birds go into. And he discovered he could walk all the way up, go onto the fence, walk across, put his paw in, got one. He basically just went down KFC. You know, to him, that's KFC. It's like when he's watching the fish tank that we've got. It's like he's watching Deadliest Catch. But he's been getting birds from it. Well, we went away for a couple of weeks, as you well know. And we came back, and this thing is, th this bush is just mullered. Half of it's fallen down. And myself and Bert, we're looking at it and we're thinking, what the hell's that happened? And I've twigged it, because a couple of days later he came in with a bird. And of course, because half the bush had fallen down, of course, it was far easier to get in there. And I've realised how he's done it. He's been clambering across it, and as he's got bigger and he's got older and he's got heavier, he's put too much weight on it, and it's broken. And so Bert's been doing the back garden and sorting all of that out, so I don't have to worry about that, it's just the front garden. The front garden happens to be about three or four times the size of the back garden <laughs> and I've got to do the driveway as well because all the weeds have shot back up again so I'm gonna go and trim the hell out of those I've got a pressure washer I'm gonna ask the guy next door if he doesn't mind shifting his cars off the driveway and I'm gonna pressure washer the knackers out of the crazy paving get all the mud out of it from in between it and hopefully the weeds won't come back because I've got weeds in that garden that are up to my waist I mean, in the, on the driveway that are up to my waist. I, no. I don't like that, but I never have any time. I'm always here, aren't I? I'm always in my office. So that's all I've got planned on uh, Monday. So I'm having a really great time because I don't care. I'm, I'm in no rush. It's beautiful to be in that situation. No rush. But... Yes, that is it. Now, I've, um, Zachary Stringfellow, or that's his screen name at least, has uh, been asking what do I prefer, manual or automatic? Well, I do prefer automatic because I'm lazy. I became a truck driver. I'm hardly the most athletically ambitious individual in the world but I prefer autos for the simple fact you just shove them into A or D depending on what auto you've got and off you go it's point and squirt but the one thing I will say is when it comes to reversing and you've got weight on manual wins every time Oh, it does, it does. I mean, obviously I'm in an Actros, but this is one of the smaller ones. And it's got a really funny number plate. But unfortunately, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the number plate. But, um, yeah, it's, it's got a funny one. <laughs> but the issue with the auto, especially with the underpowered engines, when you've got weight on and you're reversing, is as you reverse, obviously you kink. But as you kink, you're, you're kind of, what's the best way of saying it? You're kind of putting all the force into a specific area because eventually you've got to try and follow it round and you, you're just tightening everything up, you're making the angle and so it gets heavier for the unit to push because obviously the, the, the wheels on the trailer don't turn so you're kind of scrubbing them and you've got weight on them and you're trying to push it push the wheels you know slide the tires across concrete so it gets really difficult and the issue with the autos is it's jug 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 as you're going back oh 
manuals you don't get that because you can feather everything you can take your foot clean off and it's just going to keep going or stall out whereas an auto you're trying to get it just right so you're not going too fast but you're not going too slow and you're just trying to get it right just trying to get that balance that you can get with the manual really easily and it, it and with the autos especially in the actresses they have i'll just go across systems eco roll mode and crawler mode now eco roll mode is just it goes into e when you drive along but crawler mode that basically that's supposed to make the auto act like a car auto so when you take your foot off the brake you start to roll the issue is it overrides you now usually if you've not got too much weight on stuff like that you just start it rolling you start it going back and then you can take your foot off everything as you maneuver in and it will keep itself going brilliant when you've got a lot of weight on the weight counteracts this vehicle's ability to crawl to, to do that just keep itself going so then you've got to push, push the accelerator but you don't want to push the accelerator too much because you go too fast and when you're going in between two trailers the last thing you want to do is get going too fast because you can easily eat one and there's a gap of about half inch on the accelerator on the throttle body where the computer and board will override what you're telling the accelerator and then when it figures out it twigs you actually want to move back you've pushed the accelerator about almost an inch and then it goes oh right he wants to take over but you're an inch depressed on the accelerator Ooh. so manuals for reversing when you've got weight on but for everything else auto because it's just so much easier but anyway, I am going to crack on with my day. Uh, what have I done? I'm solo at the moment. I've done 15.7 miles a gallon. <laughs> That's the kind of thing, when you've got no weight on, these things can be really economical. But yeah, 15.7 miles per gallon at the moment. So, not doing too bad. But anyway, I'm going to crack on, so I shall probably see you a bit later on.
Well, that's my day dealt with. Oh dear. Lovely, lovely jubbly. Wow. Took longer than expected. <laughs> Little bit longer than expected. But such is life, such is life. Uh, that's right in the trailer I brought back. Managed to get a fridge, because I was, I was sent down there to retrieve a fridge and it was blocked in, but fortunately one of the guys down there, one of the yard guys down there who shunt, moved a couple of trailers for me, so job's good. But yes, there was a nice little accident on the way back. That was uh, carnage. The truck having taken out a car, most likely changing lanes. And I don't know who was changing lanes, so I'm not going to say a damn thing. Some cars cut in front so quickly, it's like, woo. But you never know. I mean, it was a foreign truck, so chances are he was changing lanes, but you don't know, so I'm not going to come in. But, uh, yeah. There was the um, carnage on the old M20 today, the bridge strike. Having seen the photo, I would guesstimate that the MAN with the digger on the back, the 360, is the one that hit the bridge and the poor sod in the daff had the bridge land on him. Because I've been along that stretch of road in vehicles about the same size as a daff with a fridge box on. Oh, I've never hit any bridges along that road. And I saw the video because in on Yahoo News there was a video LinkedIn chopper flying round. And as it came round you saw kind of the knuckle of the, the like the elbow at the top of the digger, the 360 digger. And in the front of it, it was all kind of white. You know, obviously, it's a, if you've seen the photo, it's an orange arm, an orange boom arm. Um, and the very front of it, the very knuckle of it style thing, is white from where I would assume that's what hit the bridge. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know. Uh, nobody's released any major details about who was at fault or what was at fault, so I don't know. Uh, maybe the bridge was sagging, it was, God knows, it could be a structural error, it could be the MAN had hit it, it could be anything. But from what I saw of the aerial footage, I would hazard a guess the MAN with the digger on the back is what brought the bridge down. Um, luckily no one was killed, that's always a bonus. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be carnage for a while. Yeah, I was reading the gantry signs and it was, uh, M20 between the certain junctions is closed until at least tomorrow. I don't usually see that in a gantry sign, at least tomorrow. <laughs> it's like the person who wrote it is like, I don't have a clue what's going to happen here, so at least tomorrow, you know. <laughs> but anyway, that's my day. I shall finish off my paperwork. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share about, do whatever it is you usually do. I shall see you in the next one, which is tomorrow. Um, hmm. Cheers, guys. See you later.